video taping this. And I would like to say welcome to our first Zoom session. This is not required today. There will be a required one later on. But I just wanted to have an opportunity to answer questions and then also go over the first project, which is due on Sunday. So we normally, I would have had this meeting last week, but I ended up with both of my classes, a bunch of people added, a bunch, which is highly unusual for a lot of people to join week two. And so I was a little bit, um, I, I was just trying to let people get done with the orientation and move to this project. All right. So I'm here to answer questions and I'm also here to introduce the project. I would like to know, would you prefer for me to answer questions first or would you rather that I just go over the project first? I think go over the project first. Okay, does everybody, that was Niles, is that correct? No, that was Will. That was Will, hi Will, sorry. Sorry, that Niles. That works for me as well. That works for you as well? Okay. Yes. Me as well. All right, fantastic, is that Brendan? Yes. Hi, Brendan, welcome. Hi. Hi. Now, well, the first thing that I would like to ask is how many of you is this your very first online class ever? This is my first whole online class. I've taken a hybrid before. Okay, so you've done the hybrid, you've kind of put your toe into the water and the yeah. completely online. All right, fantastic. Has anyone else taken an online class before? Uh, I have, I, I did homeschool for uh, two years. All right, fantastic. I actually homeschooled my kids as well. Mm -hmm. uh, my younger one is now in her second year of going to the regular public school, but I homeschooled my older one who is actually attending Pasadena City College as we speak. Oh, wow. So, um, yeah, so, and they, they both have done classes online, but I know that if you're not used to Canvas or you're not used to taking classes online, that it takes just a little bit of time to get used to things, to get used to how the professor does things, and then you are able to get started pretty easily. So, um, the first thing that I would like to remind you is that if you have the if you don't have the Canvas app downloaded to your phone, it's a good idea to do so, not just for my class, but every class that you take, you will use it. I will tell you that it is not perfect. It's not the same as taking the class on the computer, but there, it, it's getting there. It continues to improve every semester. When, it, when they first had the app, it was horrible, and I told students not to get it. But I am telling you to go ahead and get it because it will help you. And I am here actually in student view, and I realize there's a whole lot of things over here to the left. Hi, welcome. Um, that are not normally here in my online classes, so I'm going to have to double check that. And I'm, you know, I'm always double checking things. I appreciate notifications from students. That way, you know, I'm always very understanding with issues with technology. Sometimes people don't have Wi-Fi for some reason, it gets cut out, or they have issues um, with certain aspects. So I'm always open to trying to work with people. All right, so this first project, I want to start off by saying that it's, it's sort of a practice project. And what I mean by that is that if you are able to successfully um, participate with answering the prompt and following the parameters, you will automatically earn full credit for it. Because this particular essay helps me understand where the class is as a whole and what to focus on. So this is kind of a practice round. That being said, I do want students to try their best with it because then that way I can help everybody improve. So every single project that you're gonna see in our handy dandy roadmap, we go by our roadmaps here, every single um, roadmap is gonna have a key question or two. And so this key question for this project is how does schooling affect one's education? 
And the prompt is, this over here, is that Jonathan Taylor Gatto, in his essay against school, suggests several problems with the present educational system in a multi-paragraph 750 word essay. And 750 words tends to be approximately three pages double spaced with a 12 point font. But I'm gonna show you in a couple of minutes how to tell how many words in a Google Doc. You can also use Word if you want to, but if you're not familiar with Google Docs, I will tell you that they are going to be your friend in college. I use them for everything, and they're very useful and easy to train. So, anyway, uh, your job is to summarize the claim, okay? And then also discuss whether or not you've been a victim of these negative lessons you've had so much experience being a student. So what that means is that you are summary with narrative. And this is going to be the one essay that you do those two things. I do want to say with you that I would like you to include at least three quotations. I Quotations, quotations from the text. I have a typo there. At least three quotations from the text. Include three personal anecdotal examples. I would like to take a moment to define what a personal anecdote is in case you do not know. Uh, an anecdote is a story and sometimes we use stories to try and persuade our audiences of our point of view by trying to produce empathy. A personal anecdote means that it's something that has happened to you. So I'm asking you to include at least three of those personal anecdotal examples. And while you're sharing those, you may use personal pronouns, uh, I and me. But beyond that, I would prefer that you stick to the third person, meaning that you do not use, in my opinion, I think that, I believe that, or any of those phrases that put I or me or you in the center here, because in scholarly writing for most disciplines, in scholarly writing, not blogs or other things, but that it's redundant to include personal pronouns. And the Modern Language Association, of which I'm going to go to their uh, 2020 convention coming up in January with a couple of colleagues from Pasadena City College, um, they have gone back and forth about using uh, personal pronouns. When I first started teaching uh, 27 years ago, it was always stick to the third person, and then people had written articles about why is it important to do that? It's their writing, they can include I and me. So I took a few semesters where I allowed students to use personal pronouns if they added to the strength of their writing, meaning that it sounded better to use them and what I found was that students' writing was not stronger using personal pronouns. In fact, it was weaker, and it was a crutch that did not allow for students to think about scholarly phrasing. And so when I invite you to share a personal anecdotal example, that's the exception, but beyond that, I ask students to stick to the third person. So that is the key question and the prompt. And I always give this to you at the very beginning of any unit that I teach so that you have an opportunity to see what you are working towards as you are studying the text that I have assigned you to read. So I'm going to stop here just for a moment to see if you have any questions about the prompt itself. Okay, so we're set. I can keep moving yeah, on. Yeah, I think we're okay. Okay, fantastic.
I'm a, I'm I very happy. For the, I had a question. I have, yes. a, I have a question about the prompt. Yes. The prompt says that it's due tonight, but you. No, it, it's due Sunday. I'm giving it giving you until Sunday. Okay. Just wanted to make so sure. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to toggle or move over to here. Usually, your writing projects. I give you, if you look right here, I give you through Sunday night. Okay. The due dates for everything else tend to be Wednesdays and Fridays, except for the writing projects. I usually give you till Sunday night. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah, so that's a fantastic uh, question. Yes. Students in the chat, can we put it on mute when she's talking? Because there's a lot of uh, background noise that I hear. Okay, so if anyone is able to put it on mute, put and if you are able to look up here, you should have your own mute that you can mute yourself. So if you know that there's background noise, you can go ahead and do that. Thank All right. You. And I also want to share with you that you know you'll notice here Zoom meeting participation or video summary. Normally, like I said, if I didn't have so many students adding in the first two weeks of school, I would have made this meeting last week and I would have required it. But because, and by requiring it, you either attend or you view the video and you write a summary, which I will be sharing with you the next time I have a Zoom meeting because not everybody can come. They may be in class or they may be um, working. So you can choose to do a video and, you know, watch the video and write a summary instead. But this time you do not have to turn anything in. I told you that in an announcement. I'm not taking it away from the calendar because I use these calendars in the future. But I'm going to go back here just for a moment to showcase if we look at the announcements, if you ever feel lost, I'm always going to be giving you fairly consistent announcements. And with Zoom, it's always a little bit um, slower. So I, if you notice, you will always get project one and then it's week two of the semester. That's either gonna come out Monday or Tuesday of the week coming up. Project one, week three notes. What's gonna happen is uh, for next week, and I probably am going to publish it early, it's gonna be project two, week four. And if we look at the notes, I have on the bottom here, I'll say, okay, you need to do this by Wednesday, this by Friday, this by Sunday. And then it says, I'm gonna be offering an optional Zoom meeting this Friday, but it won't count against you if you can't attend. Although I, I recommend even if, you know, the students are not here, so they're not gonna know, so I'm gonna say it in an announcement. I highly recommend that you actually view the video because it may answer questions that you might have had or it might clarify things for you. But I'm always going to send you beginning of the week announcements so that you can be successful, all right? So we have had, I'm going back to the class, you notice there's an orientation roadmap, there's a project one roadmap, and soon, and then I have some extra things for you beyond the book, supporting your success, et cetera. But soon there's going to be the writing project two. Can you work ahead? In case you had that as a question. Yes, as long as something is open, you can work ahead. You are always welcome to work ahead, but know that always the due dates are going to be Wednesdays and Fridays, Wednesday, Friday. And then even the final project, it says it's under Friday here with the understanding that I take it on Sunday. Sunday's, Sunday's work for that, okay? So, next question? Yes. For the Zoom meetings, are these gonna be kind of relative to the projects or are they gonna be every week? There, no, they're going to be one, at least one per project. Sometimes there'll be, there will be two. It'll be about the projects, but it'll also be about the readings too. Yes, okay. except for this first one. The first one is just kind of, I'm going over the project, I'm going over Canvas, 
I'm going over um, some just some tips to help you be successful and then answer questions. But for the next project, I will um, be inviting students to talk about the particular text that I have assigned. So I wanted to show you one um, item here, and I believe it's under format. I'm, I'm gonna look for one second, Let's see, or it is view. I'm looking and I'm looking and looking. Text. Mm, oh, where did it go? Oh, here it is. It's not under those two, it's under tools. If you see tools, underneath tools, there is a word count. Okay. If you click on it, it will tell you how many words are in this particular document. So if you're deciding to do a Google Doc as opposed to a Word document, you can check here to see how long it is. I also have had students ask me, can the writing project be longer than what's assigned? And I always think that it is an amazing uh, question. Let's see if this starts to work here. There we go. I think it's a great question to ask me whether or not the uh, word count can be longer because in some situations you do need to stick to a word count. For my classes, I always welcome a longer word count if you have something more to say. And for most of my essay prompts, there's ample opportunity for there to be more to say. So if you want your essays to be longer, I'm good with that as long as you are not being overly repetitive. Uh, in terms of reaching the word count, um, I'm, you know, within 50 to 100 words, I'm okay with it being a little bit shorter. But with this essay being only three pages, I would hope that you would at least hit that word count if you get much, much fewer than those, and it will show me that you have not fleshed out and given enough evidence to support your points. Okay. I also... And may I have a, Yes. Hi. Um, may I request or one question? Uh, Absolutely. If we have next meet Zoom meeting, can we have alternative? Can you also have what? Uh, like Friday and Monday, can we choose one of the days? Um, what will happen is that most of our Zoom meetings are going to be on Fridays. I can occasionally offer them on other days. The other thing that can happen as well is if the Zoom meeting is not during a time that is convenient for you to attend, but you have questions to ask, you can send me an emailed question ahead of time and it can the subject heading should be question for zoom so that i make sure that i tackle it but i will do my best yeah thank you so much you're welcome you're welcome okay so um i wanted to showcase something with you as well i've been accepting assignments uh with uh, Google, but I want to make sure that you understand a couple of things about Google, especially as we move forward and there might be some handouts that you want to write on that I have for you, as well as making sure that when you turn them in, I can actually read them because I can't accept assignments via email unless that's the way I'm requesting them because it would be much too difficult to tackle all of that. So the first thing that I wanted to make sure that you understand is that any document that anyone sends you that's Google related, you can go to file and you can hit make a copy. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to nickname this document that I'm copying and it can be anything. I'm just going to call it um, my calendar. Okay, 
So I'm just calling it that. I'm gonna say, okay. So now as Zoom takes us, this is the one thing about Zoom, there's a little bit of a lag time here. Now you can see that my calendar is open here, but I also have the original here. Okay, this is the original that all of you have links to. Here's my calendar here. Oop, I just closed it out. Oh, there it is, I closed out the original. Okay, so you see my calendar here, but if you look up here, it shows that it's locked. And what that lock means is that I am the only one that can see it. So I would like to remind you to make sure to go to share. Go to advanced and change this to whatever you want to change it to. Usually it's anyone with a link. You don't need to make it specific people. Go on with anyone with a link can view. Now if you wanted to, to work on a Google Doc with a partner, you could put edit. Or if you wanted to welcome comments from somebody, you could put comments. But if it says anyone with a link can view, and then you save it, okay. I'm gonna make this smaller. I'm gonna hit done, and you see up here that this is shared. Not just anyone can find this calendar. The only people that can see it are those who have the link, okay? Now, if you go to turn it in, hey, baby. I'm gonna suggest that you copy the link. I'm gonna copy the link, I'm gonna go to done, and I'm going to go to, to this class, and I'm gonna choose an assignment here just for fun. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna make sure I'm going to the correct assignment. I hear your doggy, how cute. Okay, here's an assignment with a little pen and a paper. I'm gonna click on it. I'm gonna click Submit Assignment. And I could choose a file upload if I wanted to. And in fact, you could do several files. I could choose a text entry or I could choose a website URL. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna paste it here. And then if I have any comments to make about it, I can put them here. But I would like to share with you that you don't need to tell me that what your name is or that this is your assignment or anything else. You're gonna be required to do sign, uh, comments for your final projects and here is where they go. But I don't need any comments unless you need to tell me a comment because every time you do that, it, goes to my email. So every once in a while I'll say, please make a comment, but most of the time it's not necessary, your name's not necessary, because I know it's you. Now you have to hit submit assignment again, or it won't submit. So I'm gonna submit the assignment. And I can look at the submission details, I can click on that and see that again. And I can add a comment, and I can even do a media comment. I could do a video if I want. I can save it. Or let's say you realized, which I have done more than once, oops, I turned in the wrong version, or I turned in uh, the wrong assignment to the wrong place. You can always go to resubmit assignment. Okay, I'm gonna go to text entry this time. Let's say text entry is what I wanna do instead of the website URL. You can copy or paste whatever you've written or done. And notice you can actually include media here. So you, if, you can do a video if you would like, okay? Some assignments might work well with that. And then I'm gonna submit, okay? The old assignment will be gone. Uh, probably I'm gonna show you, let's say you have to resubmit an assignment because you did something wrong, but you know that it was, it's late for some reason, you could submit your text entry here. You can go down and say, sorry, professor, 
I submitted the wrong document. It is correct now. And then submit. Okay. And I'm able to see this right here. Okay. All right. I'm going to go back to our map because I would like you to pay attention to a few other things with the project. And then I will open it up for questions and then we can be done whenever you're done asking me questions. So we talked about the key question. We talked about the prompt and the parameters. There's always going to be in your writing projects a problem, the audience, the purpose, and the process. And the process is going to include the information here. Now, the reason why I want to show you the one time you see begin, if you ever see a begin, it means it's not due, but you best get started that day because it's going to take you more time than you think. So every once in a while, I'll have a begin. And it usually has to do with the discussion forum because you may have to put to uh, include several posts. Okay, so I have that here. But I also want to pay, have you pay close attention to the audience. I know that the audience that's going to see this particular paper, this project is going to be me, but the audience is always going to be one that I am going to expand. So the audience for this paper are actually not just me, but they're your peers where this, this project should help them be aware if there are problems so they can help persevere despite them. And then also your teachers, not just me, but other teachers who would, who would find value in understanding how to be better teachers to help avoid the issues that Jonathan Taylor Gatto includes in his uh, article against school. Okay. I have the problem here, which talks about the beginning of public schooling and the fact that, yes, it was lovely, but that uh, not everybody was included, and that just the creation of the schools itself created other problems that needed to be worked on. Okay, so that is the roadmap for this project. Normally our projects are going to be uh, layered in that you will be turning in more than one draft, but this is more of a diagnostic essay. I would like to see what you know how to do. All right, so now I'm opening this up for questions. Does anyone have any questions for me? So for the um the project, yes. Uh, when you uh, are asking for quotations and personal anecdotal examples, are you expecting those to be in correlation to each other? So like if I were to give a quotation from the text saying that uh, teachers were every bit as bored as they as the kids were, right. um, would I then be expected to give a personal anecdote? Uh, you know, kind of. Uh, either agreeing or disagreeing with that point, or can those points kind of be separate and build more um, throughout the course of the essay? The second, yes. The, the anecdote, if you wanted to have it correlate to the quotation, you could, but it's not required. Okay. The personal anecdotes uh, were more of, are more or better suited to this is the example that Gatto brings forward. This is his, this is one reason why he's against school. Uh, when I was in the seventh grade, X, Y, and Z happened, which was either the same as what Gatto pointed out or different, okay? So the personal anecdotal examples are whether or not you have been a victim of these um, negative 
schooling lessons or not. So that's really where you want to focus in on your anecdotes. You can okay. have more than three anecdotes. You can even have more than three quotations. You just have to have at least three. Good question, Will. Thank you. And then I had a question uh, about our discussion. Yes. Uh, today, it looks like you graded a bunch of our discussion, but for yes. some reason, the grade doesn't pop up. It just says completed and that you've graded it. Yes. For these first few assignments, as long as you participated, you are getting full credit. Okay. So that is what that means. That for the first few weeks of school, as we are um, working out the details, working out misunderstandings, working out typos, working out all these things, I like for assignments to be um, credit, no credit. That way students can make mistakes and it not be a big deal. Okay. Cool. Good question. Thank you, Niles. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, I have one question for Emily Format. Yes. And under title of container, I, I don't know the meaning of title of container. Title of, I'm sorry, what's the second, the last word? Title of? Container, C-O-N-T-A-I-N-E-R. Can somebody help when me? I read M yeah, mm -hmm. when I read Emily Format under author and title, there is one thing, title of container. Is, is it about the book or novel? I don't know. Well, I, I, will, sh I will show you a couple of things about titles, and hopefully this will answer okay. your question, because I'm thinking container. Uh, there are, I will share with you, I'm just going to make okay, thank you. a new Google Doc that will help you out here. Excuse me while it's allowing me to write here. All right, I'm going to make this big so that you can see it. And, and if I'm not answering your question clearly enough, you are more than welcome to send me an email with like okay. the quotation to, you know, whatever works, whatever works. I might be able to answer your question. I'm just not 100% sure that I heard that last word correctly. Okay, so if you have a title. Okay, so we have the title. We have Jonathan Taylor Gatto's Against School. Against School is a shorter text title, and so it should be in quotation marks. If it is, published in Rereading America, okay? Longer titles of books and anthologies are in italics. And so shorter text titles, quotation marks, longer text titles are in italics. And so when you cite the text and you only have to cite against school, you don't have to cite any other text for this particular assignment. You're going to be creating your work cited. Okay, work cited. And if we go to, I'm going to go way back over here, and we go and look at Purdue OWL MLA citation. I'm going to do anthology okay that's what rereading america is it's an anthology mm -hmm. and hopefully i'm on the right page here we'll see let's see so we have the basic book book with one author and then who Anthology, okay. So I'm gonna copy this right here just so you can see it because I want to bring this back over here. Oh, sorry, I, I, I thought I was muted, my bad. Oh, you're fine.
Okay. So the author, do you see, it says Charles A. Hill and Marguerite Helmers. They're the editors. This, oh, well, hold on. Sorry. I actually don't want to just do the anthology. I want to do a work in the, the anthology. I'm sorry. I clicked too soon. Let's try this one more time here. Okay, so what you're gonna do right here is against school is the title of the article that you're including. The author is Gatto, Jonathan, like, there we go. Jonathan, Taylor, and then period. We're gonna do against school here. And then we have the title of the collection, which is Rereading America. I wanna share with you that the way you uh, use the spacing here, <coughs> excuse me, is the first line is all the way to the left. Every other line afterwards is, ta is tabbed in, and you want to have it double-spaced. And I say work cited instead of works, because work just means what are you citing? Are you citing a text, a film, a visual? Some work is being cited. If you had more than one, you'd put an S there, okay? You hit enter and then tab so that you get it tabbed correctly. And then it's, comma, take it out of this. It's edited by, uh, and I don't have the book right in front of me because I have it in my office and I have the names right in front of my face. Help me, who is it edited by? It is, I feel like it's Columbo and somebody else. And then you are gonna put the publisher, which you're gonna look at the book. If you open it up right to the inside page, it'll say the publisher, the year, the page range, of the entry and then the period, okay? But I want you to notice that you do need to cite Gatto first. The, the work that you're citing is a work within an anthology. You are not just citing Rereading America. <coughs> Here, you're citing against school, all right? So you do so forth and so on right here. And if you guys have a phone with you and you're not on your phone, you may want to take a quick picture of this page before I move out of it so that you can see how to cite it. Did I answer that question? Yes, thank you. You are welcome. So I have a question. Yes. When we are uh, citing work from the essay against yes. school, yes. Um, how do you want those citations formatted? Well, uh, let, me just, let me just tell you, I did purposely not tell you how to cite them in the prompt because I wanted to see what you would do. But because, uh, because I just wanna see what you know to do for English papers and formatting. But because you are so kindly asking, I am telling you that it is MLA, so I would like an your quotations formatted based on MLA in-text citation rules. Okay, I'm gonna write that down. You can look it up and or look in your wonderful um, writer's reference. So it is called MLA in-text citation rules. And I wanna share with you also that with MLA and any kind of formatting, which that's a fantastic question, the different teachers have different expectations. So for example, I have two master's degrees. One master's degree required that I used APA or the American Psychological Association formatting rules among other things. My other master's degree required that I used MLA. MLA is what English uses. 
So you want to make sure that you ask your teachers when they are having you write essays, if they have not mentioned formatting, you should always ask them what they prefer, just like you asked me. And if they tell you that they don't care, then just choose one. Don't, you know, choose one, don't mix them. But understand that every single academic discipline has different expectations, but within the academic disciplines, teachers, some teachers care a lot about it. Some teachers don't care very much. I will tell you that I very much care that you are using MLA because that's the expectation of the discipline. Um, and so I think it's important to have that expectation. And for me, MLA is kind of like a puzzle. <laughs> it's kind of fun to figure out. And once you get it, you get it. But I never have had it memorized. I don't have works cited rules memorized to you know to the letter there you know there's different um aspects they that they continue to update um but i do know you know i do know how it's supposed to be spaced and the authors and you know you know i don't have it memorized but i know what i'm doing for what i'm teaching so i don't no one's going to expect you to have it memorized but they are going to expect you to use it Okay, for this example specifically, since I'm going to be using the printout version and not the in-book version, that citation, should I go by page number or by paragraph number? I would go by page number, it's fine. You're using the one that I provided, is that correct? Correct, correct. That's fine, that, just use that. Just okay. use the page numbers from there, yeah. And if you, um, if you are, um, yeah, because that'd be, that'd be extra labor that you don't need to do. But what you could do for the publisher, the year, and the year, go to Amazon and look up the book, and it will tell you the publisher and the year. At best, the writer's reference. Say that one more time. That's the writer's reference book. No, I'm so saying that you could go. You can go. Well, the writer's reference will tell you all sorts of rules for MLA, and I'm going to be going over those more with you as we are moving forward. But um, what I'm saying is that for the name of the publisher and the year that uh, Rereading America was um, published, who published it, and when it was when it was published. If you don't have the physical book, go to Amazon and look up the title of the book, Gary Colombo, um, look up Rereading America, and it will state the publisher and the year that it was published. Okay. All right, any other questions? Guess not, I'm good. <laughs> You're good? All right, well, Again, I, I want to apologize that you are not seeing my face, not because it's anything special, but because I think it's better when you're able to see me speaking. And likewise, for me to see you speaking, uh, I will be careful not to make that error next time. Uh, but thank you for taking part and for asking such wonderful questions and for being part of our class. What's going to happen now is I am going to save end the meeting and then I will save the video and when it's ready for people to take a look at it, I am going to send an announcement out with a link in the announcement so that everybody can take a look. So thank you and welcome. I am so glad to have met you all. <laughs>